tech in your brain and you know the whole nine yards. This is the, the voice that they want to amplify to drown out the people who are highly suspicious and rightly so that this is an indication that things are escalating drastically around the world in terms of geopolitical tension. I mean, think about this. You have an incredibly rare event that is related by and large to preparing a country for nuclear war happening in the two most adversarial countries in the world right now, arguably, the ones who have the most nuclear weapons, and nobody is talking about the fact that both of those things are happening at the exact same time. They mention it, but nobody is doing any sort of analysis about that whatsoever. Why not? Because they don't want to sound the alarm. All they're trying to do is check a box. Because if the shit really does go down, people are going to want answers. And they're going to say, well, we tried to warn you. Right? Oh, yeah, sorry, we didn't do a more deeper dive analysis linking the two things together that would have communicated the, the severity of the situation for you. But, you know, I mean, we warned you, right? So it's almost like they don't want people to panic, but they want to be able to say, I told you so. Now, I want to make it abundantly clear. I am in no way, shape, and form endorsing. I denounce these types of ideas and theories. All this does is give them ammunition to target people who are really, truly trying to rationally break down the situation and understand what is really going on for the greater good. Because when you have a continuity of government plan, when you have islands in South America, when you have a bug out location, you can afford bunkers, private jets and all that stuff, you don't care. At the end of the day, they do not care. In Russia, you can say that they're copying the United States in what they're doing. You can say that they're mimicking us and they're just doing this out of spite, running it on the same day out of spite, but at least they can say they have a plan for their population. It might not be the greatest plan, but at least they have a place where people can go so they have a chance of survival, okay? The Russians have been building out their bunker systems, building out their air defense all year, right in plain sight. You hear us talking about it. What are we doing here? Absolutely nothing. We're checking a box, but I'm gonna tell you something right now. And that is that this is more this is more than just they're not doing this for us and i know i'm sounding very cynical about the government here and uh i think it's well earned at this point this is a social experiment of sorts they're running it during the middle of the day for a reason for one they probably want to test what the limits are of the system they want to test it when the system is at its highest level of usage so you don't want to do this in the middle of the night, even though that would be ideal because you wouldn't disrupt everybody's day. You could still know if the signal went out to most people's phones because there really is no feedback. Like it's not like you get a message sent to you on your phone that says this is an emergency alert and they're going to ask you later, did you get the message? No, they, they know that metric of who got the message and who didn't. So they could theoretically do this at night. Nobody would be bothered. There'd be no uptick in traffic accidents. Nobody would be freaking out in the middle of the day, which is going to happen. And if it doesn't, then, you know, that even raises more eyebrows. Because I do think, and, and keep this in mind, before I dive into this, guys, please stick with me. I know you got to go to work today. I hope you can listen to this in the car on the way to work. Um, back in the day, in the 1950s, there was less screens. There was less media in general. You maybe had a radio, you had a few channels on the television set. Chances are you would miss one of these messages or one person on the block would have heard it. Nowadays, you know, media consumption is just, by the time you roll out of bed, you've already exposed yourself to many different forms of media. So are people just going to keep swiping? You know, and that's one of the concerns I think they might have is that people are just not even going to care at all that people are gonna be like, okay, back to TikTok. That's a possibility. Anyways, I want you to take note of what happens. During this social experiment, it's gonna happen at 2.20 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in the United States. Now, there's pros and cons to telling people the time. You don't wanna tell the people the time because if you do, then they expect it, then it, it's not really a drill. You know, it's only a real fire drill if it catches you off guard, right? Which is why they don't usually announce fire drills. They just, the guy does it, right? with the guy being me now because I'm, you know, I'm running the business here. So I'm the one who has to sporadically do fire drills. 
but they don't also want to not tell you because then it would just be, you know, it would be chaos. It would be pandemonium. People wouldn't even be able to make heads or tails of it. Lots of people would just jump off the deep end. Conspiracy theories abound that the government is hiding from some of us. They've already went to the bunkers, blah, 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 blah. This very well could. I want to make it clear. This could be it. Everything that has been preceding this, it's been a massive strategic buildup of force all around. Everything that you would think would happen before a nuclear war is currently in motion. I would not say 